Today we're going to look at something called auto ducking, which will lower your music so this way you can hear the vocals. Let's check it out. So there's certain situations where you want to use this ducking technique, whether it's maybe a tutorial or it's an interview or what I'm going to show you in a second is one of the wedding films that I shot. And this way, as soon as the person starts speaking, you don't need that background music to be as loud anymore so it can be lowered. After four and a half hours, I knew, just knew that I had something. I wasn't 100% sure at that time what it was. But what happened that day was something so surreal something that neither of us expected or were ready to acknowledge. But there was a spark, a moment, and a kiss. We took it slow for a while. We waited to introduce our boys to one another. But when we finally decided it was time, it got even better. Now, of course, you can go into the keyframe editor and lower this every time on your own and do it manually. But in the newest version of Resolve, they've added this feature, which essentially does most all of the work for you. So once we have the timeline finalized and we have all the cuts that we want to make, we'll have a line for the dialogue and then we'll have a line for the music that we want to use. So once that's all set, we can hop over into the Fairlight tab and that's where we're going to do all of our work. Here we are in the Fairlight tab. You can see that each set of audio has its own section. Make sure you determine which is which. It's pretty much self-explanatory because the music obviously would be the one that has the waveforms that continue all the way through for the most part, and the audio would be the one where there's breaks in the middle. So you can see on the left where it says A1 and A2. So what we'll do is reference the A1, we'll head over to the mixer, we'll go into the dynamic section, and we'll double click on that square. Now this is going to be the dialogue. This is going to be the person speaking. So we'll come over into the middle section there, which is the compressor, but we're not going to initiate that because you can click on that word and that will initiate the compressor. But what we'll do is go over to the side chain and click on the word send. And that's pretty much all we have to do here. And then now we'll reference A2, go over to the mixer, double click on that square, and then go into the middle section and we're going to choose compressor this time. And then we're going to choose listen. So basically we're sending the dialogue to the side chain. This is going to listen to it. And anytime that it hears the dialogue, it's going to apply the compressor. Now you can see how much this is working by referencing the gain reduction area of the screen. Once we have the compressor effect selected, let's look at a couple of the parameters and this will sort of help us kind of refine what the results are going to be. It's almost an automated process and what it does, but we still need to tune it just a little bit. The threshold, of course, will be the line at which if the volume goes above that, that's when the compressor kicks in. So let's say we set that to 15 decibels, negative 15 decibels. Anything over that is when it will start kicking in. Now the logic here is we don't want to set that too high as in negative six or anything closer to zero because we remember it's a negative number. Because anytime the vocals come in, we want this to kick in. So we'll bring that down a little bit. And of course, anytime that it's quiet, nothing will happen. Once the vocals come in, then the effect will start to kick in. Now the ratio adjusts the compression ratio. Now you don't have to really think about that one necessarily too much. What you can do is loop through the audio, adjust the compression ratio, and if it's too much or it doesn't sound right or it's not bringing it down, you can just dial that back and forth and see which sounds the best to you. Now the attack, hold, and release are kind of one and the same in the respect that they all kind of play together if you want to use that analogy. For the attack, that's how quick, once it realizes that it's going above that decibel level that we set before, once that happens, this is how quick that it's going to kick in. And remember, this is in milliseconds. The hold is how long it will hold that effect before it even thinks about doing it again. Now this is good if your person is talking and then they stop and then they talk again. You don't necessarily want the compression to kick in, the music get quiet, they pause for a second, the music shoot back up, they talk again and then it gets quiet again. It just won't sound very pleasing. Now this can go up to 4,000 milliseconds, which ends up coming out to four seconds. So it really depends on your audio. Again, let's say someone's speaking and they pause for a second and then they end up speaking again. Maybe you want to set it to two seconds or something like that. And let's say between from when they talk one time to they talk the next time is four seconds. That's perfectly fine because we set it to two seconds. You'll just have to analyze your footage to what makes the most sense. Like I said before, you don't want the music cutting out quickly and then coming back in quickly and then cutting out again. It will just be very distracting. 
and release pretty much has the same idea as the other two. It's how long it takes for it to lose the effect. So you, once they stop talking, you can go right back and have the music come in to full volume. Or you can extend the time, and this way it's more of a gradual release. Now, of course, I'd suggest, like I said, listening to your audio, figuring out what makes the best. Now, you don't have to make any calculations or anything, but just determine if it makes more sense for stuff to gradually come in and then gradually go back out, or if it's needed for it to come in rather quickly and then fade back out pretty quickly. me to tell everyone that because it's true it did i didn't want to admit it at first but it did after four and a half hours i knew just knew that i had something almost three years ago i walked into fat belly's bar and yes my mouth dropped when i saw you she she wants me to tell everyone that because it's true it did i didn't want to admit it at first but it did After four and a half hours, I knew, just knew that I had something. I want to admit it at first, but I did. So thanks for watching. As always, check out my socials in the description below. Go ahead and check out my website. I try to update blogs every now and then over there, especially when there's exciting news coming out. Speaking of, I have some exciting news in the next video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.